first your mobile phone, please. Can we have a very warm and well welcome Professor Koishi Mera San, President of GAT US Corporation. Our guest, distinguished guest, Mr. Mera, is he was a professor and has PhD from Harvard. He was professor at Scuba University and consultant for World Bank. <coughs> professor Mera today is the president of the Global Al Alliance for Historical Truth he will talk to us about a political battlefield in Asia, the comfort woman. Let's listen to him for in the beginning. Then after that, we'll open the floor for your question. Please, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Ajami. Uh, let's see, the, uh, what I'll be talking about today is uh, mainly about a lawsuit uh, our organization has started <coughs> in the United States concerning about comfort women. Uh, well, of course, this organization called Global Alliance for Historic Truth uh, Mission is not necessarily the comfort women, but we try to promote correct understanding of events during the Second World War. A, uh, many of the things in the Second World War have been misinterpreted, and one of them is comfort women. A, uh, one event was the comfort women statue was a built in the city of Glendale, California. And that was 2013. And there is a plaque beside the Comfort Women statue. Uh, that says the uh, Japanese Imperial military made lots of say, uh, human rights violation as related to Comfort Women. Uh, then they tried to urge Japanese government to uh, admit the crimes. Now, this is really a uh, totally wrong perception of the comfort women issue. Uh, as a result, well, I'll say, uh, many of the Japanese people are, were upset about this installation of Comfort Women Monument in the city of Glendale. Uh, but they petitioned to the city, but the city didn't respond to this uh, in any meaningful way. So this organization I'm leading, the Global Alliance for Historic Truth, started a lawsuit against the city of Glendale for removing Comfort Women's statue and the plaque. And that was February of 2014. And then the, this lawsuit started in uh, August of 2014. Well, this was a lawsuit filed at the US Federal District Court. The uh, District Court ruled that the plaintiffs did not have standing. And that is, we do not have enough qualification to pursue this lawsuit. Uh, in addition, the, that lawsuit was a uh, federal district court ruled that we do not have enough reasons for pursue this uh, lawsuit. So we filed the appeal to the Federal uh, Court of Appeals. Uh, 
Then the year, well, say June of this year, 2016, there was a uh, court hearing. Then, say, on the beginning of this August, August 4th, there was another uh, ruling from the Federal Court of Appeals saying there are two parts. One is the district court said that we do not have standing. Now this appeals court accepted our standing. So we have enough qualifications for pursuing this lawsuit. However, the second point that if we have enough reason to pursue a, uh, you know, say, uh, requesting removal of the statue, uh, this Federal Court of Appeal also dismissed this request. So now we are in the process of, say, uh, well, seeking another step. But before going to this point, let me point out some of the background of this uh, <coughs> Comfort Women a, uh, statue issue. Now, uh, well, I have prepared the uh, press release, so if you'd like to see this press release, that will be available after this session. A, now, mainly, Korean group and also Chinese group in the United States are promoting a wrong theory about comfort women. And that is, comfort women were sex slaves. They have been forcefully recruited from home, then shipped by force to destination that is a battlefield area during the wartime. Then they claim they were sex slaves, that is no freedom. And the number totals 200,000. Some people say more, 400,000. Well, somebody computed this number, then if Japanese military had 200,000 women to deal with, during spare time, well, they did not have any, any time to fight. Uh, so it's 200,000 is really a ridiculous number. Uh, but they claim the number reached 200,000 or even more. <clears throat> and the, but on this basis of the sex slave, uh, they started building monuments and the statues of comfort women in many places. In Korea, there are more than 30 uh, comfort women statues erected. In the US, they planned uh, at least 20 statues back in 2013. But there is only one right now in Glendale, uh, California. Main reason for this, say, uh, not increasing this number is mainly this, say, lawsuit. Since lawsuit, well, once a lawsuit is filed against a city, they have to spend lots of money for defending themselves. So they are afraid of installing a comfort urban statue within the U.S. Uh, in recently, there was uh, one statue erected in Australia near Sydney, but that was on a private property. Uh, in Canada, there is one or two, not in the public uh, property, but in the private property. Uh, so, a Korean organization and also Chinese organization are trying to spread the sex slave theory and building lots of statues uh, to the extent they are do, uh, they, it's possible. Now, <clears throat> the fact is that they were not uh, sex slaves. In terms of recruitment, 
of women, private agents recruited as a business during the wartime. Then the military provided some uh, accommodations such as, well, one is very strict uh, rules for dealing with comfort women. Uh, prices set by the, by, by the military and the uh, working hours have been controlled. And also military provided health check every week. So military helped, but this was mainly private activity. They have been given lots of, say, income. A, uh, well, any comfort woman receive more than 50 times income than the soldier. A, many comfort women built houses, not just one, but several, uh, after return home. And they have the choice of going back home. So they were not really slaves. The, this was one type of profession they pursued. Now, I think the, if we say comfort women were not sex slaves, well, Korean organizations say, well, we have lots of ex sex uh, comfort women. They claim they have had a terrible time, torture, and so forth. And that is the truth, they say. But those confessions are kind of controlled confession, a uh, kind of tailored for the, their own purpose, not truth. So what we try to show is there are US military documents. Most famous one is number 49 of the, uh, well, let's say, uh, <clears throat> True name is, uh, it's really, uh, okay. U.S. Office of War Information Psychological Warfare Team Report Number 49, Japanese prison, Prisoners of War Interrogation on Prostitution. Uh, this report was made October of 1944 in Burma. Well, now it's called Myanmar. I, uh, well, I have produced a book, The uh, Comfort Women, Not Sex Slaves, uh, to show people that a uh, sex slave theory is wrong. Uh, real comfort women are private uh, professional workers. So, uh, well, this was published last year. And this say, Report 49 is based on interview of 19 Korean comfort women. And this says comfort women receive lots of income. They had a very luxurious life. They had spare time, recreation, party with the soldiers, and so forth. A, well, there are lots of other U.S. military report about comfort women. So this confirms a uh, content of the uh, report 49. Uh, so uh, that is the situation. Also, U.S. government undertook eight years study starting 1999 through 2007 called Interagency Working Group Report. And this Interagency Working Group Report examined government's classified documents to see if, well, this covers Germany as well as Japan, military activity involved, some say criminal activities, and particularly as related to comfort women. And FBI, Department of Defense, State Department, and all those departments participated in this study. And they did not find any human right infringement uh, by Japanese military as related to comfort women. So US documents show that comfort women were not sex slaves. It's, it's so clear, but still Korean and Chinese organizations 
try to spread the theory of comfort women as a theory. Okay, uh, now going back to the question of this uh, lawsuit, if we stop right here, a, those Korean organization and the uh, Chinese organization would be very much delighted. They think they have won this comfort women war. So we will be fighting back. A, uh, we will be pursuing you know, further. Uh, in this particular case, this is a US Supreme Court. If we, you know, say retreat, this means Japanese people, and particularly Japanese military, were really criminal group of people. And this is really a uh, dishonors Japanese people and the honor of the Japanese people who be seriously damaged by this. So we will be fighting. Uh, to the extent possible, and we will be carrying this issue to the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, wow, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, very much. And now I open the floor for your question. If you want to ask in Japanese, we have a so professional translator, interpret. She will translate your Japanese question to Professor Mera. Thank you, Professor. I open the floor for your question. I hope you have many questions. Please. Oh, uh -uh. Ambassador Bahrain. I'll be very honest. I am originally a pediatric surgeon. I worked for 40 years looking after babies. For that, my question be very, very honest. Now, if you look at history, the history of human being is very, very ugly. In every race, in every religion, in every spot of this world. And for long, for the last maybe 10,000 years. Okay? Now, <clears throat> There are a lot of things in history which are bad. Now, my question is, you are a, a respected professor, and you are going ex exposing a part of history which is not nice to look at it. If I do something wrong, I just apologize and continue my, my life and develop. Because I'm a human being, I can make many, many mistakes in my life. My question to you, why a professor in this standard is coming to discuss this issue? I'm sure, sorry to be sure all the time this place is very full. Today there are few. I'm sorry to be honest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency Dr. Khalil Hassan, Ambassador of Bahrain, for your question, and Professor Mera. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, if I understand your question, say, correctly, everybody makes mistake. And why you insist that, you know, say, uh, you are innocent in this? Uh, I think it's, say... I didn't say you are innocent. No, no, okay, but everybody makes mistake. Okay, that means everybody should be accused. Hey, now, why Japan? Why Japan alone? Say, if we talk about Second World War. But okay. So can I interrupt? Because my question is different, please. 10,000 years? Can I, can I? Yeah. Please, I am not trying to attack anybody. I am asking you a personal question, okay? You are a professor, a great professor. You look at history. Why are you concentrated looking at this 
You know, prostitution is something is ugly. We all agree. When a woman has to sell her body to survive, that's something very terrible. You know, our humanity is not there, okay, for that. Why we have to discuss, you, a professor, discussing something like this? Why not leave it and look important issues in history for a man like your caliber? I'm not talking about Japan. I'm talking this question only for you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, still I don't understand the uh, ambassador's question. Uh, I have a choice. I have a choice in life. I like something, I, I don't like some other things. So, why you say I should not do this? If I choose to, you know, like to do one thing, why you object to it? That's my question to you. Thank you. Monsieur Joël. Le Jean de France. You we mentioned in your presentation that uh, those movements uh, in Korea and China were at the basis of those um, accusations that you deny, such as uh, the Chinese, Koreans, or many other Asian women, including Europeans, I heard, uh, as comfort women. Uh, you said they were not uh, sex slaves. Well, there are different opinions, so I'm not going to talk about that right now. What I want to talk about is um, about them. Uh, who are these people, the Chinese or the Koreans, who are behind those accusations? Is it the same people who were, for example, in the early 2000s when there was this uh, um, policy started to try to identify the companies, Japanese companies, who were using um, uh, power, POW, as a, as a laborer in their companies, like Mitsui or others. I mean, are they from the same caliber? Are they from the same kind of origin? Are they uh, uh, connected? I mean, these people who are working with Americans against uh, the POW issue, or, uh, are they also in the Taiwanese or in the Korean some uh, lobbies clearly identified politically to try to um, attack Japanese uh, society or politicians? I mean, are there some fundamental organized movements in China and in Korea who are working on that? And the last um, question is, um, what exactly is your organization doing? What is your founding? Uh, where do you come from? And, and who are you? Are you alone? Are you uh, with other people? Can you describe your own organization? Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think the beginning part of the question was, <coughs> who are those uh, Chinese or uh, Korean people? Yes, it is. Who is behind them? If some lobby are pushing. <laughs> 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 Hey, let's see. Okay. Uh, Do you understand? There is a uh, organization called Korean American Forum of California. Now, this is based in California. And this is a uh, organization organized by Korean Americans, KAFC, and Phyllis Kim is the head of this organization. Now, the question is, okay, what kind of background this organization has? Uh, it's, it's not a, uh, I'm not really going to nail down relationship of this organization with other organization. It is a speculation. At least there are lots of say uh, reason to assume that this organization is related to a Chonde Hup in Korea, South Korea. 
Now, this organization is independent of Republic, Republic of Korean government. Now, this organization, uh, John Dae Hyup, installed Comfort Women Statue across the street from the Embassy of Japan in Seoul. Now, Japanese people are really demanding removal of Comfort Women Statue across the street from the Japanese Embassy in Seoul. But government of Korea is not able to remove it. And this organization has very strong influence within Korea. Even president of Republic, Republic of Korea is not able to remove it. So KFC is related to this organization in Korea. Now, uh, about talking about Chinese organization, there is an organization called Global Alliance for Preserving the History of Second World War in Asia. Uh, this is a lengthy name, but that organization was established uh, during the 1990. And the first project they started was to publish Irish Chan's book, Rape of Nanking. And well, this book is really aimed at attacking Japan. A, the, this book is, well, I'll say, uh, seriously discussed by Japanese people. And Japanese scholars say that many of the uh, evidence they show in the book are not really true evidence. Many of them have been fabricated. So, rape of Nanking itself may not have taken place. Uh, so that's an organization. They say this is a non-profit organization independent of any government, but certainly there must be some relationship with the government of China, People's Republic of China. Uh, however, there are a lot of say, shifting organizations in this movement. Uh, right now, this Global Alliance for Preserving the History of the Second World War in Asia appears to be going out. Then there is another organization, uh, Global Alliance, no, not, not the uh, Comfort Women a, uh, Coalition, Co Comfort Women Justice Coalition is emerging organization representing Chinese interest. And the main proponent of this new organization is Sing and Tan, uh, two, both two women. Two of them are women, uh, and two of them used to be judge in the court in California. So Miss Singh and also Miss Tan, those people are very active in recent years. Uh, now, <clears throat> what is the link with the, U the Chinese government? Well. Probably there is, but I cannot present any evidence. Okay, so <clears throat> a, now a, these are the, the organizations in California. There are other organizations in other part of U.S. or other part of the country. A part of the growth. So there is an organization in Australia, 
Canada and other parts of the US and they maybe even Europe and so forth. Uh, those are really related. Now, what's their objective? Uh, apparently, their objective is one is a uh, well, from Korean point of view, probably main motive is disgrace Japanese. But Chinese would have another ob different objective. And that would be, well, I'll say, I'm saying this is my conjecture, not assertion. try to break up U.S.-Japan relationship as Chinese are doing in the case of Okinawa. Okay, another question. A, uh, our organization, Global Alliance for Historical Truth, a, well, we have lots of supporters. Now, we have, well, in terms of core people, the core people would be about 15 people. A, I say about, because number changes over time. So, if you say, at this point today, how many, I can say exactly how many. But since the number is, you know, say, changing over time, I say about 15 people. Those are the core people. Now, there are, in our, say, uh, <coughs> mailing list, 500 people who are supporting our activities. And also, we have, since our, we started this lawsuit, we have been receiving donations for activities. And the people who have donated, well, it is very, uh, not easy to count how many people because one person donates several times. So I say more than 10,000 people are supporting our activities. And major objective of our activity is that we try to show that a uh, truth about Second World War, a, we try to show that this theory is right theory, this theory is uh, wrong theory on the basis of historical evidence. So that's why our organization is called, you know, say, uh, Historical Truth. Can I have a thought? Just a short thought. Please. Thank you, Le Gendre of RTL again, uh, France. And uh, based on what you said, do you have access to uh, enough archives from the Japanese authorities or American authorities? Um, do you have evidences uh, that may contribute to your theories about uh, what happened during the war? That uh, issues such as, for example, um, uh, military actions, uh, arrest of uh, people, um, POWs, um, or eventually issues related to the, um, the way the uh, Koreans and Chinese properties were um, hastily taken by militaries or civilians from Japan. I mean, do you have archives to, um, to explain exactly what happened? And do you have access to those archives in US or, or, in, or in Korea or eventually in China? Access to archives to demonstrate okay. that what you say is true. Thank you. Uh, yes, 
a, uh, we have access to Japanese Kokkai Toshokan. We have access National to Diet Library. the National Diet Library. U.S. National Archives. Uh, so, uh, yes, we do. Now, uh, I think the interesting thing is that not only all say, well, I said that, you know, there are lots of, say, Korean people try to spread a wrong theory, that uh, sex slave theory, but some of the Korean scholars are good ones. Not all Korean scholars are pushing forward this sex slave theory. Some Korean scholars are really honest. They describe honestly what sex rate well, what comfort women were. They, there are books written and the uh, saying that comfort women were, you know, say uh, like uh, uh, you know, say regular the prostitutes and they have been recruited commercially and so forth. But those people in Korea who are not welcomed by Korean people or particularly, you know, active people, politically active people. So uh, there are incidents that the, uh, some of those scholars have been deprived of salary for X number of, year, number of months and they, they need to have a lot of courage to tell the truth. Any other question from the ground? Please do. My name is uh, Van Zeeland from the Royal Netherlands Embassy. Um, I'm an historian. Um, you are talking about wrong and right history. The first thing, if you start studying history, is that there is no wrong or right history. Um, I took some documents from the Netherlands East Indies, now Indonesia, uh, sent to the parliament in 1993, where it was clearly proven from, on documents that there was forced prostitution by the Japanese army. It's an open source document. So my question is, can you at any time be convinced as an academic person that you're wrong and might that Japanese people also uh, committed this kind of crimes? Like you have the same brains as anybody, so there is evil in Japanese brains the same as in mine, perhaps. Thank you. あの、well, I'll say yes, the, you know, the comfort women issue has a lot of dimensions. Now, I think the, uh, yes, you happen to pick a uh, Netherlands uh, people. Uh, that is appropriate. Uh, during the war time uh, of the Second World War, some military officers of Japanese uh, army took some female prisoners uh, in uh, Indonesia, well, now Indonesia, it's uh, East Indies, a Dutch territory at that time. So some women were taken forcefully from the prisoners' camp. Then they were made as, uh, say, comfort women. Now, this was not Japanese government policy. 
they violated Japanese military policy. As a result, when this fact was found, those people directly involved were punished. And particularly after the war, they have been, say, we are tried by military court. And some of them have been uh, prosecuted. Uh, so yes, there are many dimensions. But what I'm trying to say is that as far as Korean people are concerned, at that time, Korean people were part of Japanese people. They had nationality as Japanese. And they have been treated just as equal. Uh, so the comfort women from Korean Peninsula were treated fairly well, uh, just like Japanese people. And there are some uh, exceptions, such as I mentioned. It's in uh, Sumaran, Indonesia. And some similar cases took place in the Philippines. But those people who forcefully uh, took the uh, women for that purpose have been prosecuted. So it's not, it's a violation of military rule. They are not really uh, following Japanese military rule. So anyone, in any organization, some people make, you know, say violation. And that took place. But that was not the general rule. Any other question from the ground? Yes. Another time, Mr. Joel. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, sorry. OK, next. Um, it's, a related, it's related to the news. As you know, Japan's going to pay a billion yen to Korea for what we call the healing money. Of, um, of Korean women, comfort women. And one point related there is that the money will be given if the statute you're talking about will be removed from the uh, Korean uh, um, soul. And uh, it seems unclear to know exactly what is happening. But um, what is your re reaction to this one billion yen money, healing money provided to Korea? and comfort women to try to have some sometimes, um, you know, they are physically sick sometimes, mentally sick also, they have problems since this time. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, one thing is that I cannot control the behavior of Japanese government. <laughs> hey, you know, say uh, Mr. Abe has his own freedom in choosing policies. I did not approve it. Uh, he will say, I would like to have lectures to Mr. Abe on foreign policy. What should not be done? What should be done? And so forth. Uh, he has not been, he has not learned very much about foreign policy. Uh, maybe it's too late to teach him. But the uh, donation of money, one billion yen to Korea, looks like admission of guilt by Japanese government. So that's why I'm totally against that particular action. A, uh, but the Japanese government says it's not really, say, uh, confession of guilt. The Japanese government feels very sorry about those older people. That's why they are showing sympathy 
to those people. It's not really confession of guilt. Uh, so this, well, the Japanese government keeps saying this kind of, say, uh, <clears throat> well, what you call, you know, say, uh, uh, explanation. But explanation is very weak relative to the substance donation money to Korea as related to comfort women. Many people outside of Japan think it's a confession of guilt. So I'm against that particular policy of Mr. Abe. Thank you. Uh, sir, please. My name is Yusuke Maikao from Newsweek magazine. Um, so my, sim my question is very simple. Um, in your handout, it says that the statue in front of the Embassy of Japan will be removed shortly by JK agreement. Is this your hopeful prospect or, your, or based on some sort of fact? Um, because I, as far as I read the Korean media reporting, it's still vague and it's still fragile whether or not this, um, how to handle um, this statue. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, this, you know, say photo, explanation to the photo has a question mark. So, it might be possible that as a result of the agreement, as a result of agreement, this statue uh, may be removed. Oh, sorry. In the English version, the question mark is missing. Uh -huh. So please add question mark at the end of by JK agreement, question mark. Um, <laughs> prof what is your prospect? I do not want any speculation about the future. Okay. Professor, as an academic person, as His Excellency Dr. Hassan, told you between countries sometimes there is litige and incidents and they try to solve <coughs> this litige and incident to close it if it is true or not true did you try to discuss with these organizations how to close this it is better for the humanity for both sides i think did you try to discuss with these delegations with this because you spoke about uh, you spoke about many organizations mm -hmm. in U.S., in Korea, yes. in China. Yes. They are, did you try to discuss with them to close this? Oh no, no, no. This case, or they, it is better for everyone. They refuse to refuse to dis to discuss this, this issue. They are not really willing to discuss. Did you try it yourself with them? Mm -hmm. You tried. Direct or thorough channels or? Okay, one. I, in the case of the uh, city of Glendale, I, I have heard that mayor of the city of Glendale had a second thought. Maybe we should not have that statue in its central park. Then he thought, okay, it may be good that Japanese delegation and Korean delegation get together, then discuss and try to solve this situation. Okay, Japanese people through the uh, consul general's office try to invite Korean people to come to the table. They refuse to come. And Japanese are willing to talk. 
but the other side didn't. Any question? You mentioned like 200,000 or more are ridic ridiculous numbers. What's in your mind the number of these poor women? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, this number estimate uh, varies. I think the, uh, many scholars have tried to estimate the number. Now, that number ranges from several thousand to about 10 or 20,000 in that range. Okay, Any? then, uh, hey, well, I think the, we have, let's see, the, uh, well, well, we are trying to do, you know, say, uh, n you know, negotiation. If Korean people or Chinese people, you know, try to talk, like, you know, say, uh, usual discussion. Yes, we are willing. Now, one thing which took place is that American scholars, initially 19 US scholars who specialize Japanese history, wrote a uh, paper presented that comfort women issue is, uh, you know, say, a sex slave issue is a very uh, true story. Then Japanese scholars wrote back saying sex slave uh, theory is wrong, giving evidence, uh, various support to this. And then about 200 US scholars wrote back repeating their claim then again, the Japanese scholars wrote back. Now, uh, in the case of Japanese uh, rebuttal, uh, that is equipped with lots of evidence. But US uh, paper did not have that type of the evidence strength. So in terms of the debate between US and Japanese scholars, I think many people think that the Japanese uh, argument is more solid, more convincing th than the US scholars' argument. And incidentally, the, those debates have been published as part of the uh, US Historical Society's journal. So it's not just a uh, pure talk, but it's in the journal as well. So you can look at those things. I'm stressing on a point that you are an academic person that everyone respects. Don't you think that what you call this kind of woman, it, the type of profession, actually is not acceptable, and the history is not acceptable. For some reasons, these women did that profession, maybe by force, maybe by, by need. Then these women, comfort women, what do you think about this case human, for a human point of view? You know, I think, you know, we are living 2016. Now, we have lots of, say, uh, <coughs> well, we have had lots of lessons from history, and we have, like, uh, United Nations and so forth. But 1937 or 1944, it's a quite different world. A, this kind of, say, in particularly this part of Asia, 
The prostitution is a profession. It is, it is not illegal. It was a legal activity. And when women were born in a poor household, one way of making a living is go to that particular profession. So that was a kind of world at that time that was before you were born. I would like to thank Professor Mera for the information and uh, would like to see you soon in another time. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very much. much.